Our scripture of the morning is found in the Old Testament in the book of Psalms. Uh, it is, if you take, your, take out your Bibles and open it to the middle, by halfway through you should land in the book of Psalms. And this will be Psalm 71, which is in a, not quite, about two-thirds of the way through the book of Psalms. Psalm 71. Let us hear now the word of the Lord. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, Sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. For they, they say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him, for no one will rescue him. Do not, let, do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly, God, to help me. May my account, accusers perish in shame. May those who want to harm me As, as for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long, though I know not how to relate them all. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens, you who have done great things. Who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing praise to you with a lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, I whom you have delivered. My tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long. For those who wanted to harm me have been put to shame and confusion. Thus ends the reading of the word of the Lord. I remember building forts as a kid. I remember rounding up the blankets and some pillows and stealing a couple of, a couple of few chairs out of, the, out of the kitchen and usually bringing them into the living room because that was the biggest open room in our house. And you, you, you bring them in there and you just lay the blankets out over the chairs and you get a nice little square area happening and you get the blankets over the top and it's closed up and it's dark and you go in there and you hide out and you hang out and that was always lots of fun. It was one of them things that you, that you did when you wanted to get away from it all. You didn't want to be around anybody else. You just had to have your own time, need my own time, my own space, just to be there and just to be able to chill out and do my own thing. And I might bring a few toys in with me and just sit and hang out for a while. And let me get, let me get away from my brother and my sister and be away from mom and dad for a little bit and just to not have to worry about that for a time and just to be able to be there and go huh, there I'm in my fort I'm okay it's all good in here I don't have to worry about what goes on out there I can just I can be here and do my own thing and that was that was great for a while and then after a while I was ready to come out and play with my brother and sister again and and just and be with them and or go and do do things with my dad again or with my mom and but I just had to have that time I had to I had to go in my fort for a while 
and just do my own thing and get a chance to recharge and just and chill out and have a time to myself. And those and those forts are always a lot of fun. And the cool thing was sometimes you got to sometimes you wanted to build a fort. I wanted to build it with my brother and sister. And you put it together with the, with all of you and then the three of us would go in there and hang out and have a great time. And you play together and have fun together in a fort. But it was still kind of our own space, our own chance to do our own thing for a little while. And it was good. It's, it, served a, it served a few purposes. As I, as I look back on it, I realized that those forts, as much as they were about play, they kind of had, there's sort of three things happening in there that, that those forts allowed me to have, at least for a little while. It gave me a sense of peace. It gave me some protection. And it sort of gave me some power. Because it, it gave me that peace of mind of being in my own place, being able to catch my breath, and just being able to sit and go, ah, okay, I'm away from those annoying, that annoying brother or annoying sister of mine. I don't have to be around mom and dad for a little bit. It's just I needed my own space. And so I just, it gave me that sense of peace of going, catching my breath, okay. And that sense of protection because I had, I had the walls up. I had the blankets strung over the pillow, strung, the blankets strung over the pillows and over the chairs. And I could sit there and feel protected from the outside world. I, nothing was going to get in. It was all closed up, and it was my own little spot. I was protected. Nothing was going to get to me. And then that sense of power, because it was a place where I could go, and I'd sort of, re sort of recharge my batteries. And I had the, the power of being able to do my own thing in that, in that space for a little while. I didn't have to listen to what anybody else had to tell me. Well, as I thought about that, about the, those, those forts that I built as a kid, those, those kind of came to my mind as I was looking over this psalm where it talks about God as our fortress, as a rock of refuge to which I can always go. And it's where I can go to be saved and be rescued and be delivered from whatever is troubling me. And God does all those things for us too. And God is our fortress. He also gives us peace and protection and power. He gives us peace that passes all understanding. I mean, the world may wonder, why are we sitting here on a Sunday morning? Why are we gathered in this place to worship God? What What's it for? What's it all for? Well, part of it is that peace that it gives us. Because this is a place to gather, to come together as God's people, and to gather with people that share the same faith in God that we each have, and to know that we're not alone. And so we, and we come here looking for that peace of mind of knowing that our troubles are not bigger than our God. They are not going to do us in. Because God is here. God is here to give us peace. And God is here to protect us. As we have a relationship with him, as we trust in him, as we pray to him, as we read his word, he grants us wisdom. And he also and he gives us protection as we go out into the world. My hope and my prayer is that God protects each and every one of us as we go out from this place and go out into the world in this day and each day this week. I pray that he protects us physically, that he protects us spiritually, emotionally, that he protects us in our relationships, that God would protect our marriages, that God would protect our children, that God would protect our jobs and our technology and all those many blessings that he gives us, that he would protect those things that he would keep us and all, keep us and those things that he's given us safe, that they may be used for his honor and his glory and for the benefit of his people. I fear that sometimes we don't often, that we take God's protection for granted. 
But I believe that God wants us to be coming to him every day and seeking his protection and seeking the peace that he provides and then also seeking the power that he can give us. My prayer is that God, as he gathers us here, that he is empowering us as his people, as members of the Lord's army, that we are empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, that we are empowered by that relationship we have with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we are empowered with grace and peace and love and joy and kindness and patience and goodness and self-control that are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that when we go out from this place, that we carry that power of God with us as we live our lives so that people will look at us and know that we are his people, that we are members of the Lord's army, that we are living for him, living for him each and every day, and not just when we come here on Sundays, but when we're down at the coffee shop on Monday morning, when we're loading hogs Wednesday, Wednesday morning, when we're over at the sale barn on Friday afternoon, we're out at the, on the beauty sh- down at the beauty shop, that the people that meet us would know that we belong to God and that we have been in his presence, that we have been in that fortress that God is, that, that rock of salvation, that source of deliverance and rescue that, that God is. But now as I look back on, and as I think back too, as, as God is our fortress, and what, he, and what he does for us in providing us with peace and power and protection. I'm glad that God is not like those kids, those forts that we build as kids, because those forts eventually had to come down. Eventually, Mom would come in the room and say, okay, Sean, this has got to come down. We need space. I need, the, I need the chairs back in the kitchen. So you had to tear it down. You had to take down the blankets and pick up the pillows and put the chairs back in the kitchen. And then your fort went away. And you had to find something else to do, some, some other fun to have. But the great thing about God is, He is always with us. He goes with us all the way. He is, he is with us, with other, whatever we're facing, whatever, whatever the day brings to us, God is with us. And we can trust God, because in His sovereignty... He brings us what we need in order to become the people He desires us to be. As I looked here in in Psalm 71, as I was preparing this message, Psalm 4 jumped out at me where it says, Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. And the thought that went through my mind was, it made me think of of the young people, of the kids in school, whether they're elementary or or grade school, middle school, high school, and those that have to deal with bullies, that deal with being teased and picked on and harassed and given a hard time day after day. Well, don't think that God isn't aware of that. I would encourage you young people, when you start your day, go to God in prayer. Ask Him to help you, to give you the words to say to that bully or give you the wisdom to go to a teacher and say, tell them what is going on or or to come to your parents and say what is going on because that is not something that should happen on an ongoing basis. That should be something that that should tear you down and make you doubt who you are as a child of God or make you think that you are somehow worthless or have no value as a person. Because God loves you, who you are, where you are right now, God loves you. I want you young people to know that. I want all of you to know that, but especially the young people. Because, yeah, life in school can be rough, but God is with you. He can be with you each and every day as you turn to him and trust in him and put your faith in him. Because then you start building that relationship now as a young person. Then God is going to be with you your whole life through. Ask your parents how God has been with you. Has been with them. Ask 
ask him about, ask them about how God has been with them through their, the hard times in their life. Because God goes with us as we move through school and move, in, and move into life, into our jobs and careers, and, and into married life and family life. God is still with us. God gives me wisdom as a parent every day. He helps me to know how to discipline my children and train them up to help them be the people that God desires them to be. God is with us as we deal with, with paying bills and, and as we deal with harsh, annoying coworkers and deal with things that seem totally beyond our control. He gives us wisdom when we go to political caucuses, which is going to happen for you guys tomorrow night. I pray that God gives each of you who will go to that wisdom to make a godly decision. But he is, God is with us as we trust in him every day, as we turn to him, as we ask for wisdom, he gives it to us. As we ask for his power in our life, he gives it to us as adults. And even as we grow, as we mature and grow into older adults, as life's journey, as we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel, we realize that God is with us as we deal with loneliness, as we deal with loss, as we face the prospect of moving into assisted living or moving into a nursing home because we can no longer support ourselves independently. But God is with us. As we face the death of our relatives and our friends, and if we face that loneliness, God is with us. God is there to deliver us, to rescue us, to hold us close, to know so that we can know that we are loved, so that we can know that, that we are not alone. We can turn to him. We can go to our rock of refuge. We can go to the fortress that is our God and find peace and comfort and protection and power for anything that we may face in our daily lives, regardless of how old we are, whether we're 5 or 55 or 85. God is with us, and he is always there with us. And he goes with us all the way from the beginning to the end. And as we turn to him, the earlier we turn to him in life, the more time we have with him, the deeper our relationship with him can become. We can, we, and we are able to, to look back at our life and see how God has been with us, how God has been faithful as we have faced trials and struggles. As we, because it's, as it says in verse 20, it says, Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. So God is with us even as we face troubles even as he brings us to trials and struggles in our life, God uses those things to shape us into the people he desires us to be. And throughout this psalm, we see where the psalmist is praising God how for, for God's righteous deeds and marvelous acts and for his faithfulness and for his righteousness. And my hope and my prayer is for each of us that we are able to do that too. That we are able to look back at our life and to look back at what God has been doing for us as God has been our fortress. God has been our refuge and our strength. We're able to look back and see how he brought us to our spouse. How he brought us our children. How he brought us that job that we were hoping for. He's been with us all the way. He's been guiding our steps and bringing us along. And we can trust him. And my, like I said, my hope and my prayer is that each of us are building that relationship every day so that as we go through life, we can more and more look at our life and say, wow, look what God's been doing. Look what God has done. Look what he's doing right now. And as we have that legacy to look back on, that, that legacy God has built in our life, we're able to share that with other people. My hope would be that we're able to talk about what God is doing in our life with our friends on a regular basis. Because it may be that we have friends 
that we don't even realize don't know the Lord. But if we're able to share our story and talk about how God is working in our life, we can be a blessing to them. We can be someone who might be the one that draws them to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. God can use us to do that. As we look at our own story and are able to share it, we're able to talk about what God has done. Talk about those things, about how he God help, help gave us wisdom and recall on a test so we could pass that, that semester test and be ready for the next the new semester. And how he helped us get in, helped us to get into college and to, to land in the school that we were meant to be at, and he helps us in our studies there. And then how he helps, as I said, build our relationships with people and br- brought us to our spouse. Because that could be an awesome God story that we can share with somebody that might make a difference. It could be something God would use to draw someone to a relationship. And even as we, we come to a, toward the end of our life, as we, our grandparents and great-grandparents, it says, even in verse 18 and it says, even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I, de- till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. So we still have a mission. Even as we sit here at 80 years old or 90 years old, we still have a mission. God still wants to use us. He wants us to be talking about what God has done in our life, to tell our friends and our family our grandkids and our great-grandkids about what God has been doing in our life. We still have a story to tell. We can still share how God is with us and how he has been with us, is with us, and will be with us to the very end. And then we will be with him in eternity. So praise God that he is with us all the way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you for who you are, for being Almighty God who loves us and cares for us and protects us and guides us along the way. We thank you that you are with us, that you are with us here as we gather here to worship you, but Lord, that you are with us tomorrow when we go to work, when we go to school, wherever we go and whatever we do throughout this coming week. Lord, you are with us and we thank you for that. Lord, help us to always remember that and help us to celebrate that blessing and to live in it each and every day. Lord, we thank you for being with us. We ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our final hymn of the morning is number 513, Lead On, O King Eternal.
receive now this benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen.